Welcome back everybody. Today I am with Josh, Inspector Josh here. We are on a 1939 house. These are some of my favorite houses to inspect just because everything's always wrong. Uh, and then you always deal with like those buyers that think, oh, I can just fix it. And then yeah, slap some paint on it. Yeah, just yeah. slap some paint on it. And then we kind of educate them more on the process. So I guess the theme of this video are, are things that we find on brand new builds. Uh, I mean, not brand new builds. Brand new builds in 1939. <laughs> yeah. In 1939. Brand new builds 90 years ago. 90, yeah. So uh, 1939, uh, things that we find on these old houses and just, we're going to find a lot. So just tag along. Uh, first thing we, we see, uh, we get in the kitchen, we test all the appliances. Um, immediately notice that the gas is not turned on. It's locked out at the meter. We can still do most of the inspections. So we're going to go ahead and, and keep going forward. Uh, we'll just notify the client that the gas appliances, won't, we won't be able to test today. So we'll come back and test it after they get the gas turned on. From down there, I noticed that we had some soft wood up here. Termites like to come up. So I'm just like to check it with the screwdriver. And see, it's actually pretty solid just old paint but you have to be really cautious when you see stuff like this this looks like termite damage all right one common thing on older homes is the windows are usually still original um, a lot of areas around houston require the windows to be wood frame windows um, and so a lot of people keep the old ones and those put like storm uh, shutters or, or screens on the outside most of the time they're painted shut this one's painted and screwed shut uh, so we won't be able to operate any of the windows, um, but we do comment that they are probably original to the house. Um, All right, so coming across a lot of the windows, one of the things you want to do is just take an old screwdriver and uh, tap along the edges. One, you're looking for termites, but also a lot of everything's been freshly painted with heavy coats of paint, and then they can hide a lot of wood rot uh, along these areas. I'm not really catching that too much along here, so the water, somehow these windows are keeping the water out. I'm not really sure how, but they are. Uh, but the, one of the things that you're really listening for is some hollow noises. You can hear solid wood, and then right here, you can see how soft that is. A lot of these windows are gonna be leaking, and it's really expensive to replace these windows. So what Josh was saying earlier was that you want to really check out the area that you're buying the house from because some areas will require you to keep the house the way it is, trying to keep that old neighborhood look. So wood frame windows are pretty expensive to replace. So if a lot of them are rotted out and not operating, uh, can give you problems down the line. Let's see, check this out. We know, we know this is leaking right there. It's, trim is falling out of place and stuff. Not, not good, not good. Okay, so a lot of times on these older homes, we will have a, a plumbing excess. Um, and just by the sound before we open it up, you can tell this thing is pouring into the crawl space. I don't know if you can get close with my flashlight, but I can, it's pretty covered up, but there's a little area here and there's just water pouring into the crawl space. Nice. Water's just pouring into the crawl space. Nice. So one of the things that we noticed is we turned on the AC and uh, we didn't, weren't getting much airflow. I kind of already opened this, so I kind of not as not going to get a surprise, but you can see this filter here has not been changed since I don't know 2010. So it's it's pretty. I you got pretty good uh, suction in there, so we're going to just leave this out. It doesn't matter if it's there or not, it's not doing anything. But in a lot of times, a lot of inspectors forget to do this, but you always wanna look up in these air registers. You'd be surprised at what you can find sometimes. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we notice in the return is there's a metal pipe. Um, judging by the size of the material, it looks like it could be a gas line. We'll look further underneath the house and up in the attic to see if we can determine what it's going to. Uh, but obviously you do not want a gas line if it is a gas line in your air return. And that's something that, you know, when the house was built in 1939, they didn't have a code for that, but now they do. Probably didn't even have AC. Yeah, probably not. Yep. Uh, so something really common to see on these double doors uh, with no overhang. So we have water coming from the sky and then we have water rolling off the off the roof and bouncing. It's to find all water damage at the corner of the door frame, 
obviously the weather strip is not doing what it's supposed to and then this is completely soft uh, completely water damaged through uh, we also I haven't opened up this side but I can already tell there's gonna be some damage in that corner as well so something we see on on every house with this type of setup yeah the only fix for that is going to be replacing the doors that's it uh, you have to replace the door and then maybe the best thing to do is even create like some sort of patio cover in this area and that will help prevent that from happening again because say you replace the door this is gonna leak again eventually all right in the laundry room we got the water heater um, obviously we can't test for hot water today because the gas is turned off uh, but a few things we can notice visually on the water heater is uh, there's a decent amount of corrosion at the shutoff valve from dissimilar metals um, and then uh, you know it, the pan is sitting on the floor so we'll look to the outside see if there's a drain line attached if not we'll comment on that um it's not too terribly old it's 2013 about 11 years so we'll also put that in the report for the client to keep an eye on this uh, generally water heaters last about 15 years and so we're getting more towards the end of that life expectancy uh, the other thing we notice on the hose bibs is we're missing a handle on the hot side so it's gonna be real hard to turn off your hot water and something common on any home older than five years but really on old homes as well is uh just patches you see in the ceiling so we'll we'll take a minute make a note of this and then as we go up into the attic we'll look to see what's above it and what could have caused uh, the ceiling damage and it's also been raining a lot so our infrared cameras will pick up any leaks maybe you have a little bit of a stain right there oh so yeah we'll i see, see that it. yeah a little baby stain yeah just a little stain okay there's a lot going on on this side of the house but the main area that you want to focus on whenever you're buying older properties is going to be anywhere water can get in water is going to destroy your properties the most especially on older houses and then right here you can see where they at, this door is, uh, has been added but they cut in through the siding cut through the framing and they didn't add any siding over here you have like old old wood but there's a, a large gap right here and any heavy rain or whatever is going to happen is going to make it inside the house right here so this is an automatic write-up as an inspector but as a homeowner you're purchasing it that'd be like one of your first priorities to fix stopping water from coming in another thing too is we they have changed out some of the old water lines some of the the galvanized water lines and done pecs on the outside but it's not insulated or anything so as soon as there's a freeze or the wa weather drops down i know we're in houston but it's been freezing here pretty often as soon as it freezes here these water lines are going to break and uh, uh, you're going to lose you're going to lose your water supply to your your dish your washing machine back there another thing too which is always funny is whenever they do these they never remove the trash and you can see these galvanized water lines on the outside and you know that they're just uh failing and rusting so if you see that in one spot in your property that fail and rusting just isn't just right here in your water lines it's throughout your entire property so whenever you have galvanized water lines that are damaged in one spot the whole the whole plumbing system itself is compromised so another thing that they're going to need to focus on immediately whenever they're coming in and purchasing this house all right we got an outdoor shower over here yep you gotta <laughs> make sure it works you ready yeah oh no no bueno no oh man i'm really sad about that <sighs> yeah that's I'm going in the report <laughs> are you sure <laughs> obviously the the least of their concerns whenever purchasing a property like this is just these old houses are funny to this, inspect this might be a deal breaker oh, oh the, the, the shower is the deal yeah. breaker i mean if you market an outdoor shower you gotta have an outdoor shower you're, yeah you're right <laughs> yeah <laughs> before we move around the side of the property over here make sure you hit, take the time and hit that like and subscribe button that's how you you keep up with all our videos we try to do one a week so one of the first things I learned in Chris Murphy inspector school is when you come up to the panel box, take the back of your hand and kind of swipe it. Make sure the box is energized. Uh, if you try and do it this way, your hand's going to clamp down and you're going to keep getting shocked. But if you do it this way, you know, you can pull away uh, still pretty quickly. Yeah, so. I, hasn't happened to me yet. But like if you uh, kind of go like this, your hand will, will cramp this way and you can be knocked down but you can get stuck. I've actually had uh, new build pedal boxes be energized. Oh, and you felt yeah, it? Yeah, I felt it and you feel, feel the current. Nice. Yep. Ooh, a special Chris door. Chris Murphy, saving lives. Special, right. the special junction box. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll save that photo. Yeah. Oh. Ah. There we go. 
this thing might need some batteries. It sounds a little... Yeah. But let's find that live wire in our uh, special hatch here, our special junction hatch. Um, there's a chance that we have new Romex wire attached to old knob and tube in the attic space on these older properties. So that's something that you really want to keep an eye out for on these uh, older houses. That's what actually causes houses to burn down. Well, we should be able to see, uh, this is where the bathroom is. So we'll be able to see the water running. So if you run inside, I could probably shine a flashlight and see the water dumping down. We also have the AC primary uh, dumping water right here. And then we got this big washout, so that's gonna hold water. So a lot of water in this area um, that makes for not a great crawl space uh, environment. Can attract termites. You know, you have more humidity underneath the house. Can cause a settlement of the, the piers. Uh, so on a crawl space, we try and see as much as we can. Uh, they got this lattice all the way around. Um, so we're not gonna be able to crawl underneath the house. So we just peer through as much as possible. Um, yeah, all that water draining from the bathroom is all draining right here. I can see it coming down. Um, so we take as many photos as we can through the lattice. Thankfully I have small hands. So we can uh, take a few photos and then we try and view as many of the piers as we can. Um, just kind of get an idea of what, if they've done any repairs over the years, if the piers are leaning. Um, you know, if they're in contact with the beams, uh, we look for termite damage as much as possible, uh, wood rot, you know, anything that could start to uh, affect the house structurally. One of the other things you have on these older properties is if you see siding like this, this is asbestos. And so whenever you have asbestos, you don't have to change it right away. I think this stuff is rated for like 100 plus years if, if it uh, is installed correctly, I mean, is asbestos ever really installed correctly but the biggest thing is is if you ever do need to work on it or you need uh to remove it for whatever reason you need a company with a special license to come in here with hazmat suits and whatnot to remove it so it's something that you want to be aware of whenever you buy properties with this type of siding another thing too is i've talked about this pretty much on every single video but if you see a siding or a roof line stops like this right here and then the siding continues we're, uh, we're missing flashing and you know it's leaking over here it's because they've used tar in this location and they need some sort of kick out flashing so whenever we are in what room is this the living room area again we need to in the kitchen we need to pay a little bit more attention in this area because we think that there's water coming in and there's no kick out flashing so there could be a lot of rot in this area so it's an area that we need to pay a little bit more attention to so some fun finds on the outside. Yeah, so uh, you know, the crawl space looks pretty good. Um, they even have termite shields on the piers. Uh, it looks like the piers have been leveled at some point. They're all in contact with the beams. Um, none are leaning. Uh, don't see any damage to the subfloor. Uh, there is a wire uh, sticking down that should be secured. It's not laying on the ground, so we'll comment on that. Not a, not a terrible crawl space for a uh, nine year old house. All right, we do have a little bit of uh, joist damage here as it crumbles in my fingers. Uh, it's pretty soft right here and right here. Um, it looks to be water damage, uh, water rot. Um, you know, we when we see damage like this, we kind of knock on the window or the wall above uh, to see if any termite frass or carpet grant frass falls out. I don't see any frass falling out, so I don't believe it to be uh, WDI damage. Um, just you know, weather damage. All right, if you're buying one of these old properties and you haven't even put in an offer yet, but say it's vacant like this, I recommend just pull down the attic ladder and just popping your head up and just do a quick look around. You don't have to do anything crazy. I wouldn't say walk around in the attic, but you can get a lot of information with just a quick, quick uh, head peek in the attic. So let's do that real quick. So I'm gonna do this live, just coming up in the attic space and just do a quick head peek. We don't even have to walk around. You might want to bring a flashlight with you. But there's a few things that you can see right away. You know, you can see from the attic ladder standing, you can see that we have new ducts, which is nice. They're all hanged and separated really nicely. Did not expect to see that here. 
you can see that we have new wiring uh, open junction boxes of course need to be attached but you know newer wiring in a 1940s house is good let's see we do have old wood shingles so if you ever did have to replace your roof that metal roof you'd have to replace all these old wood shingles let's keep scanning keep scanning oh look you have rodent activity you got a nest over here you got a nest over there let's see coming over here turning around a little bit and you can see that you have a newer furnace and some newer coils which is good so looks nice yeah the duct work is hung up pretty well looking at the the raft the the ridge and the rafters nothing looks split they've added collar ties so they've added additional support in this attic space yeah so oh look you got a nest up there too so you got some rodent issues all right i'm gonna wrap the video up there i'm not saying to inspect the full attic if you're a home buyer and you don't know what you're looking at all i'm saying is just kind of step in and pop your head up there and see what you can find you know or see if you can see any major damage you'd be surprised sometimes i pop my head up there and you can see the whole house has been has fire damage across it so you know just just use some general knowledge of what looks broken and what doesn't does it look like it's going to cost a lot of money and then move forward from there if you don't know exactly what you're looking at yes there is damage on this property but you have to kind of judge not if you're going to buy it but it's is within the client's tolerances did he expect this house to be perfect probably not we're here to try to discover everything for him and then they make the decision from there. So you know, that's Chris with Day Action. If you like these types of videos, please hit that like and subscribe button and uh, catch us on the next one. Thanks guys, bye.